my streaming service, Dark and Twisted TV, to watch my exclusive animated horror series, My Girlfriend Wants to Kill Me, and more. Others have joined. So what are you waiting for? Join today. Link in the description. Now on to the show. For as long as I can remember, I have always been into scary things, even when I was a small child. So when I heard about something called the dark web, my curiosity got the best of me. I asked my best friend Sam if he would like to come over and search the dark web with me but being the little chicken shit that he was he made up some sort of stupid excuse he said he felt like he was coming down with the chicken pox or something so then I called up my girlfriend Diana to see if she wanted to come over and go on the dark web with me but she never picked up her phone hmm strange she had been absent from school for at least three days and i figured she was just homesick with the flu since it was flu season at the time my parents were gone on vacation so it was the perfect time to go on the dark web the only one who was there with me at the time was my sister rachel so I rushed home and the first thing I did was run up to my room and opened my MacBook Pro and began my search. Then I heard a boom as my door flung open. It was my sister Rachel, well actually my twin sister, barging into my room as she always did. I'm sure you know how annoying siblings can be at times, if you have them. Anyways, she asked me what I was doing as her eyes were glued to my screen. I told her nothing and to stop being nosy. Then I told her to get out of my room and, and knock the next time before she entered. She asked me again what it was. So I made up some sort of lame lie and said it was something for school just to get her out of my room. But she wasn't as dumb as I thought. She told me she knew exactly what I was doing. At first I thought she was just bullshitting me, but I could see in her eyes that she wasn't bluffing. Come to find out, she knew all about the dark web and told me it was dangerous and that I should log off immediately. She said whatever I do to not go to a link that was called Pick Who Dies. Then she left my room, finally. You know how when someone tells you not to do something, it only makes you want to do it anyway just out of curiosity well that's exactly what i did it led me to a website where there was just an empty room a dark room in it it only had three empty chairs that was sitting in the middle of it so i just sat there staring at the screen waiting for something to happen to be honest it was just quite boring to me so I decided to go search for something else, but as soon as I was about to exit, a man appeared out of, out of nowhere, it was like in thin air, and he was wearing a mask. It, it scared the hell out of me, because he was so close to the screen, almost as if he was looking through a window at me. Then three boxes with one, two and three uh, appeared at the bottom of the screen then the screen went completely black for about a minute or two 
while I heard a sound of muffling voices and sounds of dragging across the floor. Then the screen turned on. There were three people sitting in those chairs. They all three had on black silk bags over their heads, almost as if they were like uh, wearing them as masks. Then the man finally began to speak. Then I heard my mic turn on as well. One, two, or three, he said. I had no idea what the hell he was talking about, so I asked him. Out of the three of these people, who dies first, he said. And to be honest, I thought it was just some stupid fake game, so I pressed number one. Then the man took out a gun and he aimed it at the person sitting in chair number one and shot them in the head. I watched the bag over their head turn from black to red. And to be honest, it looked real. I asked him to take off the bag, but he refused. Then he asked for me to pick again. Still thinking it was fake, I picked number three. Then he raised his gun once again, aiming it at number three. Then he fired another shot, hitting them in the head. As I watched, once again, the person's mask turn from black to dark red. Then the man began to laugh in this dark, sinister tone, which made me think this was not a game anymore. And once again, I asked him to remove the masks, but he still refused until the game was over, he said. So I told him that I quit. I was done. I was out of there. And then I logged off of my computer and I went to sleep. The next morning, I was awakened by a loud scream and my sister barging into my room in tears. I asked her, what was the matter? And she said that our mother and father were murdered. They both were shot in the head in some sort of tour, dark web game, it said. But the other person was okay. My mother was found in the chair, labeled one. My father in a chair, labeled three. And the person in the middle, in chair two, turned out to be Diana, my girlfriend. And until this day, I still can't cope with the fact that I killed my parents, even though everyone tells me it was not my fault. Well, not everyone. My sister Rachel blames me since she was the one who warned me to never go to that link. So please be warned to never go to the dark web. Back in high school, I had this friend named Zach, who was kind of a wild card, always trying to get me to do things I didn't want to do. And you know how it is when you're in high school. You usually give in to peer pressure just to fit in and not seem like a dork. And since Zach was a couple of years older than me and was the cool, popular jock in school, it kind of felt like a privilege for someone like him to hang out with a dorky, nerdy, highly unpopular kid such as myself. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, he just so happens to be my cousin. So to be fair, I think he only hung out with me just because he felt sorry for me. Or maybe my Uncle Charlie, who was his father, paid him to hang out with me. Anyways, one night he told me about this website called The Dark Web. He said it was a website where you can either look up scary things, etc. But the reason why he loved going on there is because you could also buy illegal 
drugs, such as weed and other harder drugs, but he was only a pothead and would order things such as weed and those little gummy edible things. Anyways, without even asking me, he downloaded something called the Tor browser to my computer. Then he logged on to the dark web where he started looking for the best weed to buy. I told him not to waste his time because I wasn't into drugs and if my parents ever found out, I would be dead. He laughed hysterically and asked me why I was such a little pussy. So not wanting to seem uncool, I told him I was just kidding and to go ahead and order the weed. He then had the nerve to go through my mother's purse and use her credit card to order the weed. And I knew that was the worst idea in the history of bad ideas. But just to seem cool, I went along with it all. I know, I know it was stupid, but I did. Huge mistake. The next night, the drugs arrived and I was so scared that my legs would not stop shaking. So Zach rolled the joint and began to take a puff. But when he handed it to me, I pretended to smoke it which he didn't notice my pretending because he was too high himself already. Out of nowhere, he began to cry and said that there were monsters everywhere in the house. At first, I uh, thought he was joking, and then I started to laugh. Then I tried to convince him that there was nothing there, but he wouldn't listen. Then he screamed really loud and ran into the kitchen and got a butcher's knife and began swinging it. He was swinging at nothing there, at thin air. Oh, it was crazy. I begged him over and over again to stop. Zach, stop. Put the knife down, dude. Come on, man. Chill. But he started swinging the knife even harder and faster. Then before I knew it, there was a rip in my shirt and I felt a sting followed by a dull ache and a wetness but when I looked up to tell him that he stabbed me he had fell to the floor with a knife buried in his chest I hadn't seen that much blood since watching the movie The Shining I called the paramedics and my mom who just so happened to be a paramedic herself and told her everything that had happened. Zach had lost a, a lot of blood, but he was going to be okay. Needless to say, I nor Zach ever visited the dark web again. For as long as I can remember, my entire family was obsessed with UFOs. One year, we even dressed up like aliens on Halloween. Our neighbors always thought we were crazy, but we loved it and wouldn't have it any other way. I even had a UFO-themed bedroom with posters of aliens plastered all over my wall and little cute UFOs hanging from the ceiling. My bed was even in the shape of a spaceship. And even though my friends called me a dork, I thought it was cool. And so did Stephanie Turner. Ah, yes. Good old Stephanie Turner. The girl next door that I had a huge crush on ever since kindergarten. And just like me, she was obsessed with UFOs, so we got along very well. By the way, today, years later, she just so happens to be my wife. And yes, you might have guessed it, we had an alien-themed wedding. Anyways, the moral of the story is, I was obsessed with UFOs.
So much to the point that when I was older, I found out about something called the dark web, where you can read secret government UFO files, watch videos of crashed ships, and look at thousands of photos of aliens on this one website called Secret Files. I had been chatting with this guy named Jack, who was just as obsessed with all things alien as my wife and I were. And he told me about this secret hidden wooded area where aliens were supposed to land from time to time. And he asked me if I wanted to go there with him. At first, I was hesitant because I didn't know the guy like that. I mean, you usually don't meet someone online and, and meet up with them in a wooded area. I mean, he could have been a serial killer or something like that. He claimed that he had witnessed dozens of landings within the past 10 years. So I said yes, count me in. To be on the safe side, I kept it a secret from my wife and told her I was just going fishing with a friend for the weekend. So I kissed her goodbye and was on my way. When we arrived at the wooded area, there was no one there but us, which did surprise me because seeing how many people we met on the dark web in those chat rooms who also knew about the secret landing ground. We expected them to show, but obviously they were either too chicken or didn't believe it, it was real. And to be honest, I kind of doubted it as well. So we set up a campfire cracked open a couple of beers and he told me that his father was abducted back in the 90s and that his family hadn't seen him ever since. But to be 100% honest, I wasn't too sure if what he was telling me was the actual God honest truth. I mean, look, I was a big believer in UFOs, but some of the stories that he had told that night sounded way too outlandish to believe, even for me. At one point in time, we had heard something in the weeds, but when we looked, it was just a rabbit. I was beginning to wonder if this alien ship landing ground was, was all just some sort of made up bullshit. But then we saw a bright light in the sky pass over us, followed by a sound like metal landing in the weeds. Immediately after, we heard an animal make a loud screeching sound as if it were being slaughtered in pain. So we grabbed our lanterns and headed toward the area where it was coming from. And what we found was disturbing and the most gruesome scene I had ever witnessed in my life. It was a deer ripped up into small pieces and there was blood everywhere. At first I thought maybe a bear or something had attacked it, but this was no bear, trust me. Only a machine could do something like this or something from another planet. The way it was done in such a violent manner in a matter of seconds, nothing from this planet could do something like that. It was obviously whatever had landed. So we went searching for the ship, but was unsuccessful. Things had gone quiet, so we decided to go into our tents to get some shut-eye for the night and prepare to leave in the morning. Around 3 a.m. in the morning, while I was in a deep sleep, I heard a loud yell coming from Jack's tent, so I got up quickly and ran into his tent, but when I opened it, Jack was gone. He wasn't there, but left behind was a trail of blood. So I went after him, yelling his name as I searched frantically, but then out of nowhere, I was hit in the back of the head and was out like a light. 
Hours later, when my eyes finally opened, I noticed I was in a large metal room that looked to be an alien ship. And then two metal doors slowly opened, and there stood an alien-looking creature with a large head, huge black eyes, small nose and mouth, and his body was frail and thin, and he was holding something in his tiny hands. I yelled for him to let me go, but all he said was for me to eat, then pushed the food in, in front of me. And when I pulled up that lid, I screamed at the top of my lungs because it was a human head. Yes, and the head was Jack's. A few days later when I woke, I was in the hospital. I never mentioned anything about Jack and what had happened in those woods because I didn't want to sound like a crazy person. But till this day, when I see people wondering if there are really aliens out there, I know the truth. Unfortunately, Jack found out the hard way. <laughs>